look at this little accident we had here on the street here and then you can see it ran all the way down the gutter to the sewer drain there so that's why today we're going to be analyzing all of these products that you see here these uh, rust removing products and we're going to see which one of them works or maybe who knows with our luck maybe none of them will work at all we are also going to put to bed some of these old uh, old wives tales and homemade concoctions about what works and what doesn't work Here's my best advice for you when you're applying the rust remover to the concrete. Make sure your concrete is dry. Do not wet down the concrete because you'll dilute down the product. Do not apply it to the entire area. Just do a small test area until you find a product that works. Then use that entire product over the entire area. Once your product is done removing the rust, or maybe not removing the rust, make sure you rinse it off thoroughly within 10 to 15 minutes. And if you don't remove all of that residue right away, it will leave its own stain. Okay, so here is the first product. This is the Zep Calcium Lime and Rust. Now this product here, you're supposed to dilute it 50-50, and then you just put it on, right on the surface there and you leave it there for five to ten minutes and then you rinse it off okay this next one here is made by goof off and this is their rust aid rust stain remover for outdoor now this one here specifically states that it's 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 great for rust stains and it says dissolves rust stains caused by well water sprinklers okay so this they want you to use full strength you just apply it right on on the surface Okay, so this next product here is called Iron Out. Now this is a very popular one. This one is used mostly in the bathrooms and in toilets, and people use it also in their laundry, and they use it as a water softener as well. But over the years, many, many years, I've seen on the forums, people give great praise to this product. So this has a big reputation to live up to, and we'll see if it's up to the task of cutting through this rust stains on the concrete here. Okay, our next product here is the distilled white vinegar and I got to tell you folks this is probably the most over prescribed product I've ever seen in my life on the entire internet it seems like everybody thinks this thing is the next best thing to sliced bread and everybody and their mother is, is just full of all sorts of free advice about hey throw vinegar at it you know uh, especially when you have a room that has cigarette smoke all over it after somebody moved out and you got to come in and clean it up you'll see people all over the forums oh yeah yeah just mop it down with vinegar it'll go away now uh, so I'm going to be very skeptical about this because I have never seen vinegar do anything. Cleaning your floor, you know, mopping the floor, or using it in your salad dressing, and that's it. Okay, next up on the bill is CLR. This is probably the most famous product out there in, in terms of getting rid of rust and calcium deposits and all sorts of stuff like that. So a lot of people typically use this on their bathtubs and getting rid of scum and all that other stuff. But we're going to see, can it cut the mustard? Can it cut the rust? Will this dissolve the rust? Will this remove the rust from our concrete Get back there? Uh, this next product is a professional product, and I got it off Amazon directly from Singerman Laboratories. So this is their concrete rust remover, and this is specifically made to remove rust stains from concrete, stone, and masonry surfaces. Now this comes as a crystal form, and the interesting thing about this product is when you mix it with water, it turns into a gel, and you just coat the gel down on the rust area, and you're supposed to leave it there for a few minutes, and it's supposed to do its magic all by itself. And last but not least is our old good friend here, baking soda. So that's another one that you'll see people prescribe, and I would say over-prescribe quite a bit on the internet. So in my opinion, the three most over-prescribed products in the world are vinegar, baking soda, and Febreze. All right, so to set the stage here for you, you can see it's about 93 degrees outside. It is roasty toasty out here, which is very high. Normally when you're inside an air-conditioned house, you're at 33%, 35% humidity. That would, you know, 40 would be really pushing. But to get up this high, almost near 50, in a minute ago it was saying 53%. So it depends on whether the wind's blowing or the sun goes behind the cloud. But that's the temperature we're dealing with. Okay, so here's how we're going to do the test here. I have all of my products laid out here for their head-to-head -head competition here. And I'm going to follow the manufacturer's instructions on each one of these containers here and we're just going to try the little spot in front of it and we'll see if it will work and we'll be able to tell easily whose product works and whose product failed. Okay so we're going to start off with our good friend Mr. Zep out a little bit make sure they're nicely mixed together here right here onto the rust in front of the, the container here and let's see what it does 
and let's keep it from going down the hill there. Alright, so the Zep wants you to leave the product on there five to ten minutes and then rinse off. Whether it does anything, and I, I like to keep it wet. Most of the manufacturers will tell you to keep the area wet where the product is going down. So I just want to see by keeping it wet there, and they say you can apply it with a brush. So we'll brush it in a little bit here and, and see how it does. And I'll just keep brushing for a few minutes and see. Okay, so we'll leave the Zep soaking there for five to ten minutes and see how he does. Alright, so now the instructions for the iron out say to mix a cup of the product to a gallon. But what we're going to do is do one ounce of the product to a pint. We're going to cut it down by one eighth. All right, so now we're going to take some of our mixture here and pour it right down in front of it here. We'll see how that does. We'll give it a little scrub around here. And they say to keep it uh, wet, keep the whole area wet. So you never, when you put your product on, you never want to let it dry in place. You want to keep it wet and keep it moving, keep it brushing. So sometimes they'll come in and add a little more. So we'll let that soak in five minutes too and see how it does. Well, next up on the bill in our house of vaudeville, folks, we have our old trusted friend CLR needs no introduction. So it says here for concrete to just pour it on and leave it on for two minutes. So that's what we're going to do. We're gonna pick a little area here. We'll pour some right down on there and we'll see how it does. I'm gonna brush some of it around there a little bit. Okay, so now here we have the Singerman Laboratory stuff. That's that professional stuff I told you about. So what they tell you to do is take this whole tub and dump it into a gallon of water. I'm just going to make eight ounces of water. So what they tell you to do here is to add three tablespoons of this to a cup. Interesting product here. It turns it into a gel. So you mix it up here and it turns everything here into a gel like substance here. Now we're just going to pour it right there. I'm just going to give it a little stir around. I want to see, because they, they tell you all you have to do is dump it in place and let it do its magic there. So we'll see over a few minutes whether that reduces the rust or not. So after a couple of minutes here, you can see it's really done quite a bang up job there. It ate right through all of the rust. And they tell you to rinse it off immediately after a few minutes. So what I'm going to do is drag some of the excess of the gel over where the CLR stuff was and just see, see if he wants any leftover lunch that CLR didn't want to eat here. So I'll just kind of sweep it around and you can, you can see already just in the few seconds that I've been sweeping it around over here, just dragging it into place, it's already started chowing down on the leftovers that CLR refused to eat. CLR was stubborn. CLR was feeling sorry for itself. Didn't want to eat lunch today. Okay, so now we are going to do Goof Off Rust Aid. And they want you to apply it at full strength. And then just rinse it off after it's dissolved all the rust. So we'll see if it can even dissolve the rust first. And we'll talk about rinsing it off later. Now, like most of the others, it says repeat if necessary, and it's necessary, so we're going to repeat. Put some more right in here, right in the core of where it was the worst. See, if the acid is truly going to do its job, it's going to dissolve it. We shouldn't need to be continuously brushing and scrubbing and scrubbing. Because if it's really breaking up the chemical reaction, it, then it should be done. 
And now we bring us to the our good friend, the white distilled vinegar, which still can't decide whether it wants to be a salad dressing or a rust remover. You can actually hear it fizzing on the concrete there. So we'll brush it around a little bit. We'll pour some more down. Now this is not vigorous by any means, but I just want to see how it reacts to light brushing. And then later we'll try it with heavy brushing. See, remember, it's not so much the action of the brushing that matters, it's the acid. I mean, anybody should know that the only thing that removes rust is acid, the proper type of acid. And also keep in mind that no two types of rust are the same. This could be from metal, we don't know. Sometimes you get rust on your driveway uh, from the, the sprinklers. Sometimes you get rust on your sidewalk and on your driveway and on the concrete uh, from fertilizer. Because a lot of times you'll see people say, oh, try baking soda with vinegar. You know, that, that uh, foaming action helps out. So we're gonna try two of the most overly prescribed products on the internet and see how that works. See how it gives you that foaming action there. see if that does anything. Sure smells good though. I feel like eating a salad right now. All right, now we're gonna do the baking soda. It's hammer time. Arm and hammer that is. We'll put some of this down there, we'll add a little water on it and just see. I don't expect much. I don't expect anything actually. Well, here's our motley crew of characters here. Okay, so if we were to just take a visual on this, it looks like the zip did sort of okay, not all that great. It lightened it a little bit, mostly around the edges. So if you notice the rusting, if you pay attention closely, the rust is darker in the middle, but when you look all the way down the line there, see the rust is darker in the middle than it is on the edges. So the lighter stuff in the edges, most of the products here were able to clean through it. Iron Out did a pretty good job too. It looks like it ate through quite a bit of it as well. And of course, our uh, Singerman laboratory stuff, I think probably did the best of all of them. It even ate CLR's lunch because CLR didn't want to eat it. And the Rust Aid was so-so. It didn't really do a whole lot there. I really expected a lot more out of Rust Aid because I know a lot of people were saying that was a really good product, but it didn't seem to do all that great here. And of course, the baking soda didn't really do much either, except for around the edges, you can see here. This is where it was like a lighter orange and it was able to get some of that. But I think once we rinse it off, you'll see that there really wasn't a whole lot of it removed here. And the vinegar, of course, completely 100% useless. Did not make a dent in it at all. In fact, even when I added uh, the baking soda, remember the vinegar was begging me, Jeff, Jeff, I need help from my neighbor. Give me some baking soda. The two of them together couldn't even make things happen. So there you go, two of the most prescribed remedies on the internet failed to even place. 
So it looks like if I was going to give it a, a ranking here, I would give the Singerman first place, Iron Out second place, and Zip third place, and probably Rust Aid, um, yeah, Rust Aid fourth place. The CLR would be fifth place, and these two are tied for sixth place here: the vinegar and the and the baking soda. So since the, the, the Singerman did so well here, what we're gonna do now is do a time lapse and we're gonna attack this big spill here, right in the middle of the hard top here. And we'll do it in high speed time lapse so you can see it and we'll see if it works. Okay, I wanna just take another little bit of the Singerman stuff and I wanna show you in real time just how quickly it acts because I was pretty surprised. Some of the others don't do anything and yet watch what this thing does over the course of a minute. I'm just going to leave that there and you'll see in a minute's time, it'll turn it clear just like this other spot that I did a minute ago, a little test spot there. So we're not fast forwarding or anything. We're not, we're not cutting and editing and moving into the future, several seconds. You're actually watching it in real time in less than 60 seconds so far. It has already pretty much cleared the spot of rust right where we poured it there. And one other thing to keep in mind too is with these kind of gels like the Singerman here and anything else that, that you mix up, you can use a paintbrush to spread it around. That way you don't have to dump all of it out there, you just spread it to where you need it there, like this. You can also use a paint roller like this. So here we're covering the areas that were missed by the other products that didn't perform. Just stir it up and make that gel. And as you can tell here on the hard top, it did a pretty amazing job here of getting rid of all of the rust here and mostly down the gutter. But as you can see further on down the gutter there, heading towards the drain, that's the area last night where I tried to use all of the rest of the products to try to give it a head start. As you can see, using one product after another after another on that gutter there, and they all kind of incrementally added up and it probably got it down about 50% but still couldn't get it all like this stuff did here. This stuff here, first application, don't have to do a second application, and it just clears it all. This came back and cleared everything that other products before it couldn't even do. So I was very pleased with that. But as you look here at the before and after here, it's just so amazing how what started out as a complete total engineering disaster cleaned up rather nicely. And it was really only one product, and keep in mind that what worked on our rust stains may or may not work on yours because you have a different type of rust. I have found that when you buy a product like this that's made exactly for what it's supposed to be, this is made specifically to remove rust stains from concrete, stone, and masonry surfaces. Some of the other products we showed you in this video were made for bathroom use, they were made for calcium and and products like CLR that try to be everything to everybody, they just can't. You have to get the right tool for the right job. Anytime you have a tool or a jig that is made specifically to do that job and that job only, it does it better than anybody else. If you found this video useful, we'd appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up down below there, just smash that like button. And while you're at it, click on that subscribe button if you have not subscribed to our channel already, and click on that gray bell icon next to it. That way you'll be alerted every time we upload a new video. That's it for this week, folks. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you on the next one.